will be commentating Jonas versus Wang uh, Yangzhe, better known on the internet as uh, Morgan's, Morgan's own level 51, a showdown mod and a very popular figure wherever he goes, online at least. Yeah, I, he decided he, he decided to grace us with a rare offline appearance. I, I still remember him using a double weather back. I think on the very last um, tournament of uh, BGC. BGC 15, where he used the Victory Bell, uh, Bolitone, and uh, Charizard Y. It'll be interesting to see if he uses dual weather again uh, for this round. I believe he's already talked to me about his team, <laughs> and he is not up to any shenanigans. Well, at least you can't call them shenanigans. I believe we now know that as the showdown special. <laughs> showdown special. All right, um, that will be the so Kanyaska. Having spent a fair amount of his time on Showdown, he's going to use what works on Showdown and what works to devastating effect. <laughs> Alright, we'll see if uh, Jonas will be able to overcome uh, the juggernaut that is Yang Zhe. Then again, we don't even know that whether Jonas is running the same team as well. So, we're about to find out. Anything goes. As both players get ready for the game, and, well, it appears that they are going into team preview or not. Nope, not quite yet. Well, Yang Zhe running the, Zen, the special showdown is uh, Kangaskhan. Showdown special, right? Showdown special. Zernius, Zen, Kangaskhan, Smear 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 Smeargle, Groudon. Smeargle, Groudon. Those the are the four. four. Though some people have been adding Salamence to that mix, though I'm, I still don't fully understand the choice. I, I guess it's for the Intimidate support. Well, yeah. yeah. But the Duo Mega. Um, I think Kangaskhan and Salamence somewhat overlap. So. That's a very surprising. That's a very surprising. That's a very potent combo, I believe. Zernius and Smeargle. You have to disable both somehow. If you disable one, um, you'll either be facing a plus a Geomancy up Xerneas or you'll be facing sleeping Pokemon on your side. Smeagol and Xerneas is a combination that tends to intimidate perhaps less experienced players. Because they look at the Smeagol and Xerneas and like you said, you stop one, the other is going to run wild. And it's very hard to keep both of them in mind and try and set up your own strategy for the game. Yeah, and you, you can't go for the double protect either because Geomancy's setup is not reliant on, um, on, uh, no, on inducing status on your opponent. So, so we'll be going right into the match, uh, Jonas versus Yang The team review will be coming up shortly, shortly once we figure out what's going on with the stream. And there we go. Yep, the showdown special. Um, so it is going to be the full showdown special. Yeah, it, the, the Salamence call that you mentioned is there um, with the Groudon and the Talon Flame as well. And Jonas is about to go see what he can do against the showdown special with his Kyogre ho -Oh, as we talked about, a very a somewhat strong counter to Xerneas and Groudon in fact. So we we're about to see whether it lives up to his reputation as a counter to Groudon Xerneas. He has his own Salamence, which is, well, might be a Mega, might not be a Mega. Since he does have his own Kangaskhan. He has the Crobat to match the Tailwind from the Titan Flame, or even Taunt the Smeargle, and he has the Ferriton. Well, all we can say is that Jonas carries a lot of Xerneas counters in his yeah, I, He I, has the Taunt from Crobat, he can Gyro Borrow with Ferriton, Kangaskhan hits it hard, Salamence, oh, Salamence doesn't want to fight. Ho can hit it with Sacrifier and Kyogre. Well, Kyogre is somewhat vulnerable, but very strong answers to Xerneas yeah, on the other side. It'll be interesting to see if Yang Zhe decides to bring the Xerneas. I want to talk about the Ferroton because even though you, you mentioned it as a Xerneas counter, Yang Zhe's side has a lot of things that can take out the Ferroton. I believe if the uh, Mance has a fire move or if the Groudon has a fire move, Talonflame should have Flare Blitz in there somewhere or do they not run those anymore? No, Talonflame, Talonflame will carry a fire attack. Either the Overheat or the Flare Blitz. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see whether Jonas brings Ferroton or not. I actually will wager that he won't, considering that there are too many things that can take out the Ferroton without uh, Ferroton having much impact on the game. Still though, is his most guaranteed answer to the Xerneas if it sets up and has not taken prize uh -huh. before. And it is a one attack that can only kill Xerneas. Okay, but then again, uh, Yang Zhe does have the Salamence. And if Xerneas sets up and protects and Salamence comes in to with the Intimidate, with the intimidate Ferroton is no longer able to KO the Xerneas, even with his plus two Geomancy. Uh, do you think we'll see the Ho-Ho from uh, Jonas? I think I think he's, he's pretty safe to bring the whole. Like, like we said, he's probably not worried about the Groudon carrying a rock attack since it's very rare. He's faster than the Smeargle. He well, he won't enjoy taking. He won't enjoy the, either the Intimidate or the flying attacks from the Salamence. Though if Salamence is a special variant, Ho is gonna have a fun time because Ho does have 154 base special defense. <laughs> he he can sacrifice the Xerneas and pretty decent matchup against Talonflame. Flame. His Brave Bird is going to win out over Talonflame's Brave Bird. So I would say a good bet for Ho and the Kyogre to both make an appearance on Jonas' side. Yeah, I, but I, we're about to see whether my... Um, whether we're about to see whether I was able to think what the players thought. As Crobat and Kyogre come out from Jonas' side of the field, Crobat a very strong lead, of course. And, and Yangzer goes with everybody's <laughs> favorite. Smeargle's Xerneas lead. 
well, despite having so many um, Xerneas counters, good Youngster feels confident enough to lead with it anyway. Well, right now, he's perfectly justified in leading what he did. He's now have access, access to a follow me in Jomancy easy setup right off the bat. Assuming, of course, his Xerneas outspeeds the Kyogre. Which I think is safe to assume because if you're running the showdown special, you're probably running teammate 2v2 two two Xerneas. Yeah, but I think it's a bit risky for Smeagol to go for the follow me here. I mean, the Crobat could have the Thorn which could ruin Xerneas' setup. And but without follow me goes into, the Thorn will go oh, into the follow yeah, me. Yeah, that's true, that's true. In fact, he's following because of the Thorn from Crobat. Oh. Yeah, then in that case, then there's really nothing. There's nothing Jonas can do to stop the follow me Jomancy play, other than hoping that his Kyogre outspeeds and can hit Xerneas with an Origin Pulse before he Jomancy's. And Crobat goes for the Thorn. Smeagol now taunted and will probably want to switch next turn. Oh, but as Xerneas gets Xerneas the Geomancy off. As it is naturally faster in Kyogre, gets the Geomancy off and Yangtze is up and off and running. Yeah, I, I mean, I even if the Water Spout comes out from the uh, Primal Kyogre, it's not really going to do much to a plus. It's going to do a decent amount of damage <laughs> still. It's going to be... In fact, I think he wants the... He needs a Water Spout right now. Or uh, Origin Pulse to hit. He gets the Water Spout so he gets some progress on the Xerneas at least. And we see the Sash on the Smear Girl. In this case, I, I believe Yang Tzu wants the Smear Girl to go down. Attack, increase, and he's evade. taunted. So I, it's a very obvious Protect Plus. In fact, in fact, the tables might be turning a little bit here because... Crobat yeah, could go for the Tailwind. Crobat could smash it. No, no, Smear Girl is forced, pretty much forced to switch out. Unless Yang Tzu wants to stay in and use Fake Out. If he carries Fake Out. And, well, no switch from Yang Tzu. So maybe Yangtze is carrying the fake out. He, he wants to sacrifice his Smeagol, he doesn't want to risk a switch Yeah, Smeagol does show the fake out, so no struggle from Smeagol. And Z Moonblast goes into the Kyogre as Super Fang will finish off the Smeagol. <laughs> the one and only situation in which Super Fang will kill anything. I, I, I feel that was a wasted move. He should have gone for the Super Fang onto the Xerneas. No, I think what Jonas decided was, Jonas probably called the switch out from the Crobat. Oh. And want, uh, from the Smeagol and wanted to Super Fang to switch in. True. I, I don't know, he, I feel that he should have gone yeah, for the Yeah, but the Tailwind, tailwind. play was there. But then again, the, he knows that his Kyogre was slower than Xerneas, so even with the Tailwind, he would still be slower than Xerneas. That is that is true. Right now, with a plus two Xerneas... But the thing, the other thing you need to know is that plus two Moonblast does not always KO Kyogre, even 4 HP. That, is that because of Kyogre's special ball? That's because of Kyogre's natural special ball. So, Kyogre might still be able to take the Moonblast and retaliate with a... Uh, well, he doesn't want a Water Spell when he's down to the red. <laughs> Probably an Origin He goes for the Dazzling Lead, recognizing that he cannot KO the Kyogre. And brings both down to half. Kobe goes as for Kobe the does match the tailwind, though as we pointed out earlier, Kyogre will still be slower than Xerneas next turn. And Mance actually goes for the double H faster than the Kyogre and, and taking finish out. off the Kyogre. Yeah, before he can even use another move, so we do not see any origin pulse uh, coming out from Jonas. And Jonas, I mean he has the speed advantage now, but he's facing against a Geomancy of uh, Xerneas. It's not going to be easy for him. I the whole has to come out here, but no, the Salamence comes out I suppose he wants to get the Intimidate, but staring down the Xerneas... Oh, oh, oh wait, hold on. Salamence is faster than Xerneas under the Tailwind, assuming it is Jolly 2 5 2 So hey. if he goes for Double Edge here, he can get a KO on the Xerneas. But that, is that, does he have to Mega Evolve first to get He will have to Mega Evolve. As in, he's 100 base speed already, and Xerneas is 99. So if he's Jolly 2 5 2 on maybe Naive 2 5 2 he, should, he will get the Double Edge off before Xerneas and should KO Xerneas. But at the same time, if Xerneas protects, and Yang Tzu has Draco Meteor on his own side. Yeah, he's, Yang Tzu can trade at, at the very least. At the very least, yes. Yeah. But if Jonas pr predicts that and goes, what no, Jonas just goes for the safe protect, wanting to get the speed boost to at least actually. I'm not sure that was the right play at all. Well, uh, Yang Tzu as well protects his uh, uh, Mega Mans. And we see Super Fan come out onto the Minis. Is Jonas perhaps setting up for Hyper Voice? I believe so. That's the only logical play if you want but to Hyper Voice? The Spread against plus two Xerneas, I don't think it kills, even at this point. Mm. I'm not sure at all. Well, I guess if the another Super Fang comes out... That is true. Yeah. <laughs> but I think he will want to be Super Fang in the Salamence. Yeah, to guarantee the KO there at least. Also, it all I think Jonas predicted a Protect from either side, either, either of Yangtze's Pokemon. But she did get on Yangtze's own Salamence. Yangtze predicting that uh, Jonas would go after his Salamence, predicting the Protect on Xerneas. Hmm. But both players not quite working out and... Getting a little bit of damage off on their support mons, or, or well, on the Xerneas. And Xerneas does go for the Protect Distance, but is Jonas going to go for Youngster Salamence with a Dragon Attack? Tom goes into the Xerneas as Salamence does go for Draco Meteor, and he avoids the Salamence. Oh, a very unfortunate turn there, as Jonas made the correct call, 
the Zenith did protect and went for the uh, Yang Zhe's Dragon Meteor, Dragon Meteor Miss. Miss. That's, uh, And we do see the Ho-Ho come out as the last... Is it the last? Yes, it is. Uh, Jonah's last Pokemon. Oof. So a very strong check to Zenith on the field, though probably slower than Zenith, given the whole sit set. 95 base speed. Mm, and I do or believe 90, 90, I do believe sorry. this is the last turn of Tailwind. Yeah, this is the last turn of Tailwind for Jonas and But the important thing is Zanias has already yeah, burned the protect. So I mean, Salamence can, can get the KO this turn or, or Youngster could just switch out the, the Zanias. Hmm. Because Zanias is a sitting duck right now, but again if you switch out, then you give free damage on whatever Zanias switches out to. So yeah. Really? Youngster again a protect from Jonas, wasting his last turn of Tailwind. We do see the Lazarus League come out. I would have presumed the hole goes for the Sacred Fire on the Xerneas, but can he survive a double edge? Or what? I suppose after the Intimidate, it goes for the Brave Bird instead. Brave Bird goes, I would think, into the Xerneas. Has to, has to. Yep, it will bring down the Xerneas, but at what cost? Jonas is very far behind. And Tailwind is about to expire this turn. Could we be seeing a Sunderman Speed Titan next turn? Oh, Yangtze correctly calls the Protect, goes for the double edge. Hole still takes the hit. A decent amount of investment given by Jonas, as Ho reveals the leftovers. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I believe his Oho does carry uh, Roos so he can recover the HP, but with the Tailwind gone... And now that Yangtze has brought out the Brave Bird, <laughs> this could be over. Yeah, Talonflame, I mean, both of them have Brave Bird, but Talonflame has the faster Brave Bird, irregardless of speed here. Again, I suppose if Brave Bird is, cannot KO the Salamence, it could be a speed tie between the Salamence, which could decide the game, but Ho goes for the Protect, predicting the Brave Bird. I think Yangtze is, was going for the Brave Bird or Salamence anyway. We shall see yes, he does. We see. Uh, yeah, Jonas pretty much making an overly safe play. An overly safe play, which is probably... Yeah, Salamence was in range of Brave Bird anyway. The Protect from Ho, well, I suppose he had no choice. Since without Tailwind, Salamence would have finished off his Ho anyway. Yeah. And Yangtze will take the game. With the Xerneas doing most of the damage, despite Jonas' multitude of Xerneas checks. Yeah, and as, as mentioned, we did not see the Ferrothorn. Too many things on uh, Yangtze's side that can take out the Ferrothorn easily. I, I do... Even even with all the threats, Ferrothorn could have just taken care of the Xerneas, no problem. Yes. But again, even without the Ferrothorn, Jonas had many situations in which he could have turned the tides of the battle. I suppose he, he could point to the Draco Meteor miss as a, very, as a huge turning point for him, mm. since he made the correct call that turn. But before that and after that, he was making overly safe plays. He was not pressing the advantage even after Tailwind went up. I, I do want to mention the fact that um, he chose to Super Fang and KO the Smeargle. The Smeargle was already taunted. It cannot do anything. Fake out Yangtze wanted it to die. Yes, exactly. And Jonas just um, gave that to him instead of uh, pressuring uh, Smeargle's partner, yeah. which was definitely more threatening. It was really a strange play. There's no other way to describe it. It's, you going for the Super Fang on the Smeargle clearly wants to die. I suppose, like, like, the, the conventional prediction would be that Smeargle had to switch. Yeah. He had to switch it out. But again, when you think about it, Smeargle had no more use in that game. Exactly. So, um, just Smeagol, leaving it open to be killed. Smeargle down to 1 HP. At most takes one can get one follow me off, that's true, but it was taunted, that's one. And secondly, with so many faster mons on jo uh, Jonah's side of the field, Smeargle would not be able to do anything. Up. We're not be able to get Dark Void off. So, it was, it was just useless to Yangtze. Yangtze wanted it dead. And Yangtze knew that Jonas would predict the switch out from the Smeagol and would target that slot. So Smeagol was always going to stay in and get sacked. And Jonas walked right into it. Indeed. With a Super Fang no less. But I suppose <laughs> it's not something you see every day. Well, it's super Fang getting the KO. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a... The only scenario in which he gets the KO on a 1 HP Pokemon. Well, well we do see why Smeagol... I mean, we didn't even see the Dark Void coming out. Did we see the Dark Void? No, no. all we needed, all he needed was, was to just to follow me. Uh, because so Jonas walked right into... He had no way to stop follow me. Uh, Geomancy. He didn't have the Kangaskhan with a uh, fake out. He didn't have the, well, I suppose everything else would have walked into the But he didn't have something with strong spread damage to pressure the Xerneas on the turn in Geomancy. I guess, um, yeah, I mean, he could have maybe gone for a Crobat maybe to match the speed that Xerneas has yes, for three turn turns. One tailwind. Yeah, but definitely, uh, I did see that, I did expect the taunt coming out from Crobat and Yangtze did too. That's why he went for the follow me. It was just a safe play. That's I exactly what Smeagol's Xerneas gives I you. Mean, I mean, he's sacrificing his Smeagol's usefulness, you could say, by, uh, by drawing the, for the taunt towards him. But and he was is, willing to sacrifice it anyway. But that's how strong a plus two Xerneas is. It's so strong that you just, you just throw things away to get that set up, and it will just carry you the rest of the game. Indeed. <laughs> the showdown special really coming into play, and washing away, well, not washing away, Jonas was the one with so the Kyogre. So now, Yangtze is 3-0. 3-0. 
So Yangtze going strong with the showdown special. Yeah, quite likely to make it to the top card, I believe. Uh, I think it's a bit early to say that. We have I believe seven rounds of Swiss, so uh Yangtze could still go negative actually. Personally I, I do want to see uh Yangtze uh, top card because the way he plays Smilgo is very interesting. I mean he, he didn't he doesn't really just abuses he doesn't just abuse the double. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> so far he we hasn't did, done we did see the fake out on Smilgo. Yes we that did. is not something that a normal Smilgo user would run. Oh uh, it's hard to say. Usually the Smilgo user chooses between the fake out and the transform. And I believe well uh, one, of, one of our friends who's currently in the UK who will be playing the regionals later today, Shang, has told us the thing about Smilgo is that sometimes if you get trapped, you don't want to have be forced to struggle. Oh, so having an attack move. Having an attack move just to waste tauntons is useful. Nah, I mean, there are so many other attack moves. I suppose Yangtze would have preferred to struggle because he would have guaranteed <laughs> that he's yeah, he would have taken out his own Smeagol. But he got the wish, he got the, he got the Super Fang anyway, so all swell that ends well. Alright then. And well, you may hope for Yangtze to cut, but I believe there are a lot of people out there who are just horrified that this sort of team exists. <laughs> well, it is um, doing well on Showdown. It, it works, not showdown, it works, it works yeah. for a reason. Well, it does well on Showdown. We call it the Showdown Special for a reason. It's also running all over Battle Spot. Smeagol sits at number 5 in usage, which is well, every, everyone's worst nightmare come true. Maybe I believe people are over-preparing for um, what Smeagol brings, the obvious thing that Smeagol brings, which is the Dark Void. But they are not, maybe they're not prepared for the other use, users that Smeagol can be used for. Like as we saw earlier, Yangtze using the uh, Follow Me to great effect. The, the team that's been running around has long enough of this. <laughs> I would hope, I would really hope that players have learned what the team does by now. Oh, Smeagol does give that overwhelming pressure yes. of Dark you are Void. just afraid of Dark Void. So maybe you leave your faster things against it and you walk right into a yeah, follow, follow me. me. And, and that, that's, I suppose that's the other thing you have to note about Jonas' team. He had the very strong Xerneas checks, but he did not have strong spread moves to hit Xerneas with, which gave Yangtze a very easy follow me Jomancy turn one. Since there was no way for Yangtze to get off strong damage on the Xerneas as he Jomancy. I mean, um, he did bring the Kyogre, which I think was the right place. Since yes, he does got off the turn one Water Spout, yeah. which did a lot of damage. He did but that was after, that was after, after the Geomancy. Yes, but it was still decent damage. It's as good as an attack you can get. As good a special attack as it gets after Geomancy goes off. <laughs> so he made the right play, but after that, it just really fell apart. Yeah, Going, he, attacking, just didn't have enough attack, firepower. Attacking into the Smeagol. And I, I think he, did, he, he just didn't realize that Kyogre could survive a boosted attack from the Xerneas. I believe even if... Even assuming his cargo only carries 4 HP and no bulk, it's still a damage roll. I've survived Xerneas Moonblast, Moonblast. and my cargo is has no bulk whatsoever. And so it's a damage card regardless. And Dazzling Gleam is definitely uh, something that Kyogre can survive. So he had that turn 2 in which Kyogre could have done something, but chose to go for the safe protect. Well, he was facing the mens on the other side, And right? I suppose the thing is, even if he had gone for the protect, the logical play to pair with the protect would have been the Tailwind. But instead, he went for the Super Fang on the Crowback, which really makes very little sense when you Super think about Fang it. Super Fang on the Xerneas, actually, again. Oh, oh no, he went to do the, the Smeagol slot. Oh, yeah, 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 that was the one. <sighs> Given that he was protecting his Kyogre, you would have thought that he had to be going for the Tailwind. Yeah, his, especially since his, um, his speed boost is only temporary, whereas um, Yangtze's speed boost is as long as Xerneas is on the field. So there were, there were moments in that game where Jonas really could have turned the tides. But I suppose maybe he didn't know, he didn't trust his, he didn't trust the damage roll on his Kyogre perhaps. And he, again, like you said, he got too fixated on the Smeagol. You well, know, it, it happens to uh, He the thought best that maybe, us. yeah, perhaps he thought that if he got tail, even if he got tail in up, his Crobat would have been hit by Dark Boy and he just didn't want, but again, he was taunted. <laughs> so I, yeah, the, I, I keep forgetting the, the, the core fact of the matter was that the Smeagol was taunted. Like you said, he could be expecting a switch in. Well, but okay. even then, why did the Kyogre protect? <laughs> That yeah. was a chance for him to take, get the Tailwind up Because even with his checks at the back His Salamence, his whole... The Tailwind had to go up for them to have a chance against Xerneas <clears throat> Well, given how uh, the previous matches have played out Would you say that the meta has uh, stabilized? I mean, for the previous two PCs We've already seen the top three pretty much being the same Pokemon Kangaskhan, Xerneas and Groudon I would say that players have begun to recognize that This is what works But at the same time, whenever that happens in any meta game players will also start identifying what counters these top threats. But we have really yet to see that happen today. Or maybe maybe you see it in, fin in the later rounds as players as players like Yangtze run into players who are prepared for the showdown <laughs> special. But then again, Jonas looked very prepared for the showdown <laughs> special and it just went downhill from turn one. Well, you could I suppose argue you have to call that turn one correctly. You have to call whether it, they're, they're going to double protect, they're going to go for follow me, uh, Geomancy, the fake out Geomancy, the Dark Void. But fake out? 
But there was very little prediction on that turn one. Yangtze was always uh, going for yeah, the Colony Geomancy. He, he had say no was risk. A, that was an autopilot. It was an autopilot for Yangtze, right from turn one. And Jonas, I suppose, didn't lead correctly. And even that is disputable. <laughs> he had a Kyogre to land strong spread damage through Follow Me. He had a Crowbat to taunt the Smeargle, but he just didn't leverage his own advantages. The Taunted Smeargle, especially, yeah. Alright, then we'll be taking a break um, before we go on to the next Swiss round for round four. Alright, so hopefully we will see. Hopefully the games that we see in later rounds will be as good as what we've seen so far. And until then, I am Matthew. And I am Justin. And we will be back in round four of Swiss.